Uh, next speaker, Professor Stephen Fox from Sweden. Good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody involved in the organization and management of this event, and I must say I'm very, very impressed with all the practical cases we've seen. What we've seen is people with imagination, then they've had the courage to take the first steps to do something, and the determination to take it as far as they have. This is a long presentation, which I haven't got time to go through all of it, so I'm just going to pick out some key points. So need, this is what's needed, highly distributed prosumption. This is highly distributed and highly efficient. This, on the other hand, which started in Europe 250 years ago, is efficient, but it's not distributed. If you do that, that's what you get. Okay, now what's needed is cultural compatibility, environmental sustainability, low financial costs, low opportunity costs, and social sustainability, and that's what this is. And we've seen practical examples of that um, already getting off the ground here in India with different institutes. And this is, of course, very compatible with what this we're here to do today. Now, solutions. The last gentleman, he talked about a mobile gem processing. Good news. Mobile factories are in use all over the world today. They're used um, in what are considered to be exceptional cases. And they're considered to be exceptional cases because of the fixation of the world on fixed industrial production, right? which is based on a paradigm that started in northwestern Europe 250 years ago. There is no need to build factories. There's no need to build training centres. There's no need to rely on 100% internet connectivity. You can go mobile. Factories are mo as mobile apps in a production system. This isn't speculative. This isn't conceptual. This is real. Mobile factories are in use all over the world today. In Afghanistan, Uganda, Vietnam, Finland, Russia, the USA, Canada, all over the world. Okay. I won't go into the details about this, but to make this happen, you only need to apply well-established, well-proven industrial engineering, uh, manufacturing engineering techniques. That's all. The final one of these on that list was leapfrog skills. Now, uh, we've talked, heard some people today talk about their backgrounds. My background is I'm a craftsman. I left school when I was 16, and I got all my qualifications while working full-time in industry. And I hold the status of master craftsman with the City and, Gu City and Guilds of London Institute. So there's nothing in this that's not practical. Right? But people are always talking about skills barriers. Skills barrier, you can train people in a week to achieve world-class productivity and quality in a, with a movable, movable factory. Again, this isn't a concept, this isn't speculative, this is a fact. This is, a, this is an open source symbol system for uh, designing uh, production systems based on movable mobile uh, factories and other types of leapfrog facilities. If anybody wants this, uh, you can, if you go on the, the link there, you can see um, the current working document of this. And anybody's interested, I can post you out the physical sets and the digital form. And you can get, it's primarily the use of uh, pictograms, but there are some words there, and they can be just translated into local languages. But the idea of this is people don't have to be literate to use it. Okay, this, this presents a grammar and a vocabulary for ordinary people to participate in the planning of regional production systems around, around their villages. Okay, Digital India. This morning we, we saw a presentation of a uh, digital platform which showed the, the architecture for such a platform. I won't go through this now, but on these slides there's the uh, visual interface for such a platform. So there's the user interface is all sorted out there, so we can collaborate on that possibly. Okay, so what's the point of this? What we're trying to do is make productivity growth a lot easier, a lot less expensive, 
more positively predictable, very widely distributed. So if we position this between digital India, smart villages made in India, you already have the government initiatives that you can draw upon uh, to get funding uh, to start this going. Okay, in the cases, as I said before, movable factories are being, they're in use all over the world today, achieving world-class productivity and quality. Uh, key lessons. This is the key lesson. We heard just before the break, we, we heard a, uh, a rather doom-laden prognosis for the future, comprising copy-pasted sentences for uh, studies by McKinsey and so on. But I didn't hear any original thinking in that presentation. Uh, but this is what you can leap over. You can leap over this paradigm that started 250 years ago in Northwestern Europe, that was constrained by the available uh, technology for energy and materials processing <laughs> of those days. And since then, there have been nothing but refinements of that paradigm. Right? Now, you can leap over this. This is still good for doing stuff like uh, processing um, iron ore into steel, that kind of large-scale stuff. But anything else, this is old-fashioned, very old-fashioned. So actions. Well, people will be happy if their basic needs can be met and then their higher level needs can be met. You've already got initiatives in India for smart villages, model villages. All of these things under the Make in India initiative can be made in villages. And again, you don't have to start building factories. You can have mobile factories that go from village to village. And then with regard to trade, we've seen an architecture for a digital platform earlier today. We've got the user interface. It can be all situated within this. Okay. Right, now, here are some publications. So this is an uh, important one, movable factories, how to enable sustainable widespread manufacturing in regions without, without manufacturing skills and infrastructure. This is also relevant to an industrial economy. Leapfrog skills, uh, material science, Analyzing the potential contribution from advanced materials technology, enabling distributed communication and manual skills. So uh, I've got a minute left. Who'd like to ask me a question? <laughs> so um, if there's anything I can, I've seen all the fine work being done in these institutes that you have here. If there's anything I can do to contribute or to assist, uh, please just email me.